Welcome to Blab Chat. Yeah. That was good. That was, that was good. great. It's been a while. Strong. It was healthy. It's been a while. So it was healthy. Strong yeah. and healthy. Organic. 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 Gluten free. <laughs> Gluten free. Oat milk. Glucose. I love no yellow milk. number five. No, no yellow number five. Welcome to Blab Chat. This is an all music production podcast. Uh, the first thing you guys will notice is we're at our new digs here. Yes, fancy. Shout to Cast Sound Lab. Mm-hmm. Shout to Preach, uh, Preach for the for the you know the Preach. upgrade here. Got Josh with three cameras. We got, we got Josh point to the, over there the wall. We got some ship lap. There you go. Okay, this is ship lap. That's new. I don't know if that's ship lap, but I like saying that word ship lap. <laughs> and I watch a lot of HD TV, so it's looking official in here. <laughs> uh, so we're good. Um, Welcome to episode, what? 73. 73. Yes, it's been sir. a few weeks. It's been almost a month, but we're happy to be back. Mm-hmm. Um, again, so much going on. So much going so on. Much. We're just going to jump right in. Um, another major change here that I'm super stoked about. Not only are we in our new place, but um, we're joined by a very, very, very special guest. And usually we bring the special guests in uh, you know, a little bit later in the show, but we wanted to bring you in now because there's so much to talk about. We haven't been mm. back in a while, so... Um, I want to give a warm, warm welcome, round of applause to um, this legendary producer, DJ. I mean, he does everything. I was, I, we're going to get into it, but um, I grew up listening to a lot of your music mm-hmm. and, and you're very, very influential wow. in um, a lot of what I do, but a lot of what a lot of people do. And uh, so I know real heads know. Let's give a warm round of applause to uh, Prince Paul, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> I learned that from the, from the Drake joint. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Can we, print, uh, print, can we turn uh, Paul's mic yeah, up a little bit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um. So welcome to the show, man. Man, thanks for uh, having me here. And I, I apologize. I should have been here a while ago. Nah. Oh, All no, good. It was good. actually our fault. We were we were supposed to have you what, a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. right? At? And we had to keep rescheduling because the schedules have been all messed up, and you know, so I think that there's some about the universe is like uh, fucking everything. You know up, what? I think I think it actually worked out perfect because one, we're doing our first episode with him in the new spot. Exactly. You know, it took. I mean, uh, Paul, how many emails did we do? Like twenty five emails back and forth. I don't know. It was, but it was we worked quite it out. Bit. We worked yeah. it out, and we're yeah. here. So it's it's. I'm very excited. Man. Yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah. So um, welcome to the show, Lab yeah. Chat. Thanks for it's having our me. Our podcast, our little podcast we have here. Um, you know, so I just want to jump right in. So, you know, a lot of our, our listeners and our watchers are music producers. Um, they're mostly creatives. So it's producers, it's engineers, it's, um, you know, even rappers, too, I would say. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. Even though I hate on them <laughs> all yeah. the time. Struggle rappers. But, um, oh, man. Yeah. So <laughs> for the people that, that don't know who, or who aren't familiar with, with you, um, and I hate to put you on the spot like this, but... um. You know, why don't you give them a little kind of introduction on, of like what you do, you know, who you are, what you've done. You've done so much. So I know this might be a little uncomfortable, but let them know. Let them know who, who Prince Paul is, man. Yeah, it might be bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me break this down. <laughs> break it down. It, it's uh, um, in the 80s. I was in a group called Stetson Sonic. I was a DJ and produced. <laughs> I produced a group called De La Soul, Three Feet High and Rising, mm. De La Soul's Dead, and Balloon Mind State. Wait, uh, hold, hold on one sec. A group called De La Soul. If you don't know <laughs> right. De La Soul, like, <laughs> right. like well, please cool. log <laughs> off and <laughs> right. unsubscribe to go. us. Right, right. I'm just kidding. Don't unsubscribe. Hey, yeah, but I go, don't know, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, we have I, some some youngins here. So. I never assume. That's when you yeah. get your feelings yeah. hurt. Like, totally. don't you know who I am? They go, <laughs> 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 yeah. That's very fair. So, yeah. yep, De La Soul. Uh, De La Soul. I'll, tr- I'll hit all the... the Probably the bigger strides. Uh, De La Soul, Grave Diggers, yep. with uh, RZA and Recipes Poetic and Fuquan. Um, Handsome Boy Modeling School, um, Prince Among Thieves, Psychoanalysis. Uh, and, um, I was on a bunch of VH1 shows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying like I'm all I'm all, I'm all over the place. Um, Big Daddy Kane, Queen Latifah, Slick Rick. Wow. Um, Boogie Down Productions, um, I produced um, Vernon Reed, Bernie Worrell, a lot of people. I, you know, I, I, I might be like one of the few producers who, like, if you think of the records like Handsome Boy and all the little uh, records that have features, I probably produced like the most amount of people I could think of. Yeah. Like, you know, because there's, you know, there's records I did 
where there's like Pharrell on it. There's records that you do with, you know, uh, Nona Hendrix. So there's a bunch mm-hmm. of people I've worked with in, in my in my journey. Right. But, you know, so you've been you've been a big collaborator. I mean, you've yeah. collaborated with a lot of people. The, the question I've been dying to ask you. What was it like working with Dan the Automator? <laughs> so, you know, he, he's, he's first of all, let me just say my piece. When I was, I think I was in middle school. I was just, I was a kid and uh, I listened to Handsome Boy Modeling School. I listened to Dan the Automator, all this Wait, stuff Wait, hold on, you, you was a kid when Handsome Boy came out? Uh, yeah, I was probably oh, freshman oh in high school or something Hell? like that. Or Ooh. So I, um, or no, I was in middle school. So I'm listening to Dan the Automator. I'm like, who is this guy? He looks Asian. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> He's using all these beat machines. So I did my research and I just like, I remember just like digging into his catalog. Um, so what was that experience like working with him? Because to me, he's a really, he's a real mad scientist when it comes to making beats. Oh too, no, so. Dan, Dan is dope, man. Like he's really smart and he's goofy. So that, right. that makes the process of making music really easy. Cause we just sit down and just laugh most of the time. And, and, uh, we just working with Dan is is very relaxed. Like he's really smart. Like he like he'll know the machines and he'll know how to break things down. But he he records in such a relaxed way. So to give you an example, when we did the first Handsome Boy record, we had two NPCs in his living room, wow. and we're kind of just looking at each other with the TV on. Wow. <laughs> just like wow. just like banging around between. What do you think it is? Is this handsome? Yeah, that's very handsome. Could you wear this to it? Yeah, I could wear that to it. <laughs> and we're just going back. You know, it, and it's it's very yeah. relaxed, but you know, when we get down to the technical part of getting things done, like he's he's a uh, like a equipment geek, man. Like yeah. he's going into a spot. He has like every possible piece of uh, vintage equipment that you could think of. Yeah. You know? I remember reading um an inter- uh, I think it was like an interview in like Mass Appeal or something and it was like kind of breaking down his gear and he's got all the old beat machines. Oh. I just thought that was great because back then, like uh, when I was doing my research on beat machines and stuff, like I found out that that stuff was like really expensive back mm-hmm. then. Yeah, yeah, you know? man. A lot, lot of drum machines. I mean, that's one thing that, that I have. I, I have a big collection of uh, vintage drum machines, you know, because I haven't just sold all the stuff that I had. But um, Dan has stuff that's just like... Uh, Super I mean, rare. It's, it's not just the drum machine, it's just the keyboard, it's, it's the outboard equipment, and it's like he's he's crazy with it, man. Mm-hmm. Like you know. Wow. So what's your what's your um, like go to piece of gear currently? Go to piece of gear. Yeah. Jesus. Are you um, still on the hardware? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, um, I'm still ASR Pro Tools. Like yesterday, mm-hmm. I was programming the speed on um, on an MPC nice. five thousand. Um, but yeah, I, I just like the the feel of, of programming. But you know what's crazy is is you'll sit and you'll program things, and then you'll go over to your boy's house, and he goes, "Hey, look at this!" Goes, chick, 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 chick. And you, everything <laughs> chops and up real quick. Yeah. And you go, man. Yeah. That would took me about like you know thirty minutes. Thirty minutes yeah. on ASR ten. Yeah, man. So you know, I try to combine a little bit of both. You know, right. uh, some of the old stuff with the with the newer stuff. You know, I have Ableton. I you know, I still have, like I said, the Pro Tools and mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm all over the place. And have you made beats in Pro Tools? Yes. Yeah. What's your What do you like it? Do you not like it? Like? Oh no, I I, I love it. it. I mean, it. You know. Yes. I, I'll, I'll give. I'll I give thought you. I was the only one. People make fun of me for making beats in Pro Tools. No, no, no. I mean, that's one thing I'll credit Dan, the automator. Like I knew how to work Pro Tools, but he took like like the learning to another level. Oh, you can do this and do that. And I'm like, wow. So wow. that that enabled me to use Pro Tools a little more than I had before. I was just using it for sequencing before. Right. You know, it's, yeah, it's easy to sequence records, but right. you know, he was taking stuff, shifting and chopping and moving, and you know, so. Right. It, Amazing. It's, it's cool. Yeah. I, I like the Pro Tools 12. Um, just the new version. It just makes it a lot easier to sequence and chop stuff. So, uh, well, you guys, so we're all producers. They produce. Um, Atlas, I, I'm going to call you a producer, though, because you, fu- you fucked with FL Studio for a little bit. So you're a producer. Yeah, too. I mean, I, I did FL, <laughs> so I have Logic. You know, I had the machine. Remember the gold machine I was yeah, using for a machine. while? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, dibble yeah. and dabbling and, and producing. Yeah. Um, obviously, like songwriting and, um, you know, managing and management is more my thing. Yeah. Now. Yeah. But yeah, Mundo Beats, baby. Mundo Beats. Mundo that's right. Beats, so, that's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, Perfection uses Logic. Yeah. 
and Glam uses Reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, my son uses Reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. How old's your son? He's 26. Mm-hmm. So he's knee deep in the production thing right now. Yeah, he's more DJing now. He's uh he DJs for Little Uzi Vert. So oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Word. He's out yeah. traveling and stuff. So he's, nice. He's that's where his um, so but I mean at. that's so that's so crazy. So your son. Uh, first of all, I think that's I, I love seeing. Um, the father-son connection, like having the similarity and oh, I careers. tried to talk him out of it. Really? Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I had a, yeah. it's funny. I had um I was on text message with Royce the Five Nine recently, and um I did this event in Detroit a couple weeks ago, and um I I was watching I was watching this Breakfast Club interview, and Royce was saying that his son made beats, and his son I think his son is like uh, seventeen. And um, so I was already scheduled to go to Detroit. I'm, I'm kind of on tour doing these like small producer get togethers where I go to a city and I choose a studio and then I invite a small handful of upcoming producers to come and hang out and play music and oh, stuff. Nice. So I'm going to Detroit. So I hit Royce and I'm like, dude, I'll be in Detroit in a couple of weeks. Um, if your son is like interested in coming, I'd love to meet him. You know, um, I didn't know he produced music. So, uh, I, you know, on the Breakfast Cup interview, he was kind of saying the same thing, how, like, he tried to talk his son, like, out of it, <laughs> whatever. So, like, you're, so with your son, you know, obviously he's producing music now. Um, how did that whole father-son connection come about in terms of, like, music? Was he just around, like, you and Dan with oh, the NPCs, man. and then he, he became, like, passionate about it? Like, I'll, g- it I'll give you an example of how my son has been, like, around this from the beginning. I remember we was doing... It might have been uh, De La Soul is Dead or Balloon Mind State. One of those. Wow. Probably Balloon Mind State. Yeah. And I remember uh, having him in one arm as a baby programming the S900. Wow. And De La going, you know, you could put him up. It's like, nah, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, wow. and so that's been him from the gate. Like, he's been to all the events that I, I could possibly take him to. Wow. I, I've, you know... Wherever I was at, he was at all the studios with the grave diggers, with this, with that, you know. So he's seen he's seen it from the beginning, and his his knowledge of just music, or especially hip hop music in general, is far beyond whatever his age is. Like yeah. he just knows a lot of stuff. Um, Mainly because he was around you guys most of the time, yeah. where he like kind of got, yeah, you know, because like a lot of that generation today gets criticized for not knowing yeah, the history for of, not knowing yeah you know yeah. rap and hip hop yeah. and you know everything that comes with yeah. that and then also too like you know i personally love uzi vert's music right so i have produced for him as well and but when you think of like the uzi vert brand and then you see okay uzi vert's dj you don't you immediately assume mm-hmm. that that DJ <laughs> yeah. like doesn't the know their, right. what isn't with right. the hip hop shit yeah. or whatever, yeah. whatever that means. Right? Or it's just people, yeah. or it's just people assume on like on the that current type. sound. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Hip-hop. So how how has that experience been like with him? You know, DJing for Uzi and kind of being you know your son and having all this knowledge, but then really being in that world as well. Like how do, how do you feel about that? Um, I, I think for him it. it it's good that he's got uh, someone to talk to, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, cause there's definitely some obstacles and stuff that he wasn't prepared for, especially traveling, right. um, you know, just the long hours, you know, cause y- you look on TV, it's like, yo, champagne studio, yeah. ah, I got off the, the, <laughs> got off the jet, yeah. you know, everybody's <laughs> yeah. chilling, they're all looking all fresh. He's like, man, dad, I'm tired, yeah. Yeah. I'm beat, yeah. da da da. No so, sleep. Yeah, no sleep, it's like, yo, you know, you gotta eat right, gotta, you know, certain things, make sure you rest, and it's mm-hmm. not all about partying, but, yeah. right. He's um, yeah. He, he's been handling pretty pretty well. I, I think the thing that he's really starting to learn is working with with artists because yeah. you know, as being a producer, it's really like uh, babysitting slash therapist mm-hmm. slash you yeah. know, any type of. Mm-hmm. So it, it's a lot of egos to handle. So you know, he's learning that part of it as well. You know, just yeah. the, all the different people on the road. Right. And how to you know talk to them and, and deal with them. Right. Uh, when was when was the moment? Or like how around what age was he? When you know you were like, all right, he's got that music bug. Like you seen him, maybe he was like trying to program something or tapping on drums or something. Like when was it for you? Well, see, my my son is, is he would probably kill me for saying this, but. I gave him a, a set of turntables. He had a pair of 1200s in his room. Them wow. joints was dusty all through <laughs> junior high, uh, all through high him. school. But this is what did it. 
like the kids, like his friends would come over the house and see the turntables. Like, yo, man, yo, P, yeah, you DJ and da da da. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Didn't know how to do <laughs> and anything. You're like, right. So, so he kind of it was kind of like a fake it till you make it. So right. he had this situation where he had the DJ one time and he wasn't really that good, but he kind of crash coursed it. And his first real gig DJing, um, he opened up for the genius. Oh, oh wow. 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 <laughs> and he killed it, wow. which kind of got me mad because I was like, yo, you gotta pay your dues. And I'm from yeah. that school. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Yo, you gotta do this. His first time out. Ah, I'm like, crazy. Really? <laughs> he just skipped no, all this. No, no introduction. Like, yeah, it's Prince Paul's son. So he didn't, it, you know, it, he didn't get that part of it. He just yeah. actually did really well. Wow. So he just picked up on it and figured it out. And from this point on, he's just been doing well. So it, wow. it, it baffles me. You know what I'm saying? Because right. I'm, I'm from the school, like I said, you just, you work, you- Carry the crates. Carry, and, yeah. well, yeah, yeah, back in my days, it's carry equipment, yeah. crates, mm -hmm. this, DJ, da, 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 da. people call you sucker DJ, and then <laughs> yeah. eventually you get to the point where everybody goes, oh man, you know, you're not bad. You made yeah. it. So how long before, between you giving him those turntables to when he actually started touching them, was that? Let me see, he probably had them like, let's say eighth grade, and then, 12th grade. Wow. 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 <laughs> 12th so they grade. They were just collecting dust for like four oh, years. I so he had to do high school, though. like, let me do the high school thing. And then senior year, just like, fuck it, I'm going to jump on these tables. Yeah, because they, they tested him. It's like, yeah, P, why don't you yeah. do the party? Yeah. Uh, okay. But, but remember, <laughs> in high school, I'm sure this is true for all generations. If you're a DJ in high school, you're the man. Yeah. Like, pretty much for the most part, right? Like, I, got, I always thought so. Or if you play it, but you're like the guy, right, oh, right. he's you're so DJ, cool, he's the music, DJing yeah. the prom, mm -hmm. he's uh, the, the cool prom, kid, right? like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I always felt that way, but then yeah. my home, one of my homies was the DJ, and uh, he was from New York, I had moved out to Pennsylvania, but he, he was from New York and he DJed the parties and I was like so jealous of him. I was like, because yeah. to me, he was DJing the parties. He was in the music business, even though yeah. he wasn't, <laughs> but because he was the DJ, to me, it was like, wow, this yeah. guy's the man, you know? Yeah. And like, did, did you tell him that? Yo, you the man. No, I didn't tell him that. <laughs> I didn't tell him man. that. Actually, at the, time, at the time, I'd be like, yo, play some beats so we could freestyle over them. Because yeah, we were like yeah. singing and rapping and freestyling over all the beats. And we would have like, uh, during like the high school, uh, you know, proms or whatever, we would really start like ciphers. Yeah. And the teachers would let us. They didn't really care. You know, yeah. we would just. And then funny enough, I had, um, I ended up moving back to, 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 I moved to Harlem and I'm in Harlem and I'm standing at the store. And I see these three guys looking at me. I'm like, yo, it's about to go down. I'm about to fight these guys just by the way they were looking at me. And the one kid keeps looking at me. He's like, yo, you, you, you look just like my friend. And I was like, okay. He's like, is your name Atlas? I was like, nah. No. <laughs> I was like, nah, no, I don't not. know who you are. And I went to walk away. And he was like, no, no, no. He was like, yo, it's me. And he said his name. And I was like, oh, shit. And like, so he ended up moving from Pennsylvania to wow. Harlem. We didn't even know started connecting and he's still wow. he's still DJing to this day is, wow. is he still the man not he's not as much you know you know how nah, that is nah, nah, he fell nah, off anymore. he fell off a little bit he fell <laughs> like, off oh, I hope cool. he's not sit, listening to this <laughs> right. podcast yeah. <laughs> first thing I he's no gonna offense. call you after yeah. no offense to the cool kids in my high school yeah. but <laughs> you guys know I wasn't the coolest kid I played my, drums. Sorry, I played. Yeah. I was in a senior band in yeah. my in eighth grade. But then that actually, my elective was funny. My mom always supported me the same way. She bought me some drums, like congas, but right. like I didn't touch them for a minute. See, but, but it's different for you because why? Oh, because female. Yeah, I mean, no, 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 not oh. at all. Why? Um, because your mom, your mom is like such a. Yeah, Music, that's why your legendary. son and my yeah. we're, yeah, we're the same similar. age. Oh, and see, there you go. My mom Her went on tour with everyone. Same music. Like yeah. I, I know a lot of music that I'm not supposed to know either. But like, yeah. even with that, like playing drums in school and like cultivating that in school, like kind of spelled, it kind of spilled out during high school, and that's when I was like. Okay, I think I want to do this. See, exactly. but, see, but drums is a cool instrument. It's not it's like the, awesome. the glockenspiel or yeah. something. No, yeah, like I had to rock out of that glockenspiel. Yeah, your, your cool level might have dipped a bit. Yeah. <laughs> a little, little Funny bit, enough, the glockenspiel is actually a very cool instrument to use now. I don't even know what that is. It's what just is a little really funny word. Thing. I played the yeah. trumpet in high school. You did trumpet? That, was that takes a lot of breath. Trumpet? It takes a lot of breath. Yeah. Well, how, how were you? How was it hitting those notes? Yeah, that's bad. That's crazy. Paul, so in in your like beginning. Ages of making music, were you um, 
were you into like the the instruments and stuff or were you more like digging or did you do both oh like, no nah, it was all it was all records records yeah it, it was uh when when i started making beats it was literally just beats you know what i'm saying it's just a drum machine boom boom if, yeah if you listen to early 80s hip-hop i mean talking about after sugar hill mm-hmm. you know what i'm yes. saying it's just all oh, yes. drum machines, just mm-hmm. D, you know. Yeah. Everybody had a DX, uh, a, an 808, 909 right. came out just TR, a little right. later. Yeah, that um, legendary. That SB12, when yeah. you started like sampling the, the drums a bit. Wow. But before then, it was just straight up hardcore, just very boring drum machines. So still those records boring. now, like, I, you know, my son listened to them just like, he'll fall asleep. My daughter right. listened to them, like, oh God, really? <laughs> there was like amazing the, shit like the back then. Yeah, of, the, of the production back then exactly like, so let, let's talk about production like back then compared to now so it, it's interesting because you know i think with hip-hop namely you know with hip-hop production being a hip-hop producer right you know you it's kind of this thing where you have this beat machine and you're sampling records and kind of that's how how it kind of started um and i think producing nowadays is very similar still where we're we're kind of like in our own shell a little bit right instead of an mpc it's a laptop and we have our headphones and we're alone and we're clicking in and we're making beats and stuff so what's your um what's your take on kind of like the the climate of music production right now do you think the quality is better do you think it's worse do you think it's very similar um just in terms of like the fact that we have so much technology now where anyone can do it as opposed to back then do you think that's hindering the quality uh it, it's kind of a weird love hate thing because i think a lot of obviously like sound quality is way better first mm-hmm. of all um and there's a lot of cool things and, and and the way people produce is a little more advanced but then it's like to me it's almost like add water because there's so many programs that goes you know, even a baby could do it. Ding, right. da, 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 da. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it, it 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 really questions one's talent. It's when people can take that bit of of um, technology and do something. I'm go, yo, how and what and how did you do that? But it, a lot of songs, if I could listen to to it and just break it down, I get bored. I'm like, oh, yeah. they did this, this, that, that, that stock sound, this, that, 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 that. that's just it. You know, that yeah. bores me. If I could sit down, it's, it's almost like watching a movie, you know how it ends. Oh, they blow up and die. Yeah, yeah I'm saying yeah. it just takes, you know, maybe that's just being a producer, that's the way I look at things. But, you know, that's the the sad part for me. It's like, to me, it's just add water beats, you know, add all fast beats. food. Bing, yeah. ah, it sounds great, don't yeah. get me wrong, but it's like, even a caveman could do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, say that. So. Are there um are there any new producers that you're really digging right now? New producers. Yep. I don't know anybody by name. Does so what your about son like try to convince you? Yeah. Like to do what? To like listen to certain artists or yeah, producers. He, or? Yeah, I mean, he doesn't really like or send me stuff by producers. It's just by song. Songs. Yeah, you know, because you know, even though I, you know, I've been DJing since I was. Ten. So that so, what I try to do, even if I'm not that crazy about the music, I at least try to understand it and try to you know. And I still play. I play a lot. Of, like I just spun for Burton last week, the snowboarding mm-hmm. company, and I played a lot of stuff that I don't listen to at home. Right. <laughs> right. 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 You, know, you know what I'm saying? Right. What were so, what were some of the stuff you were playing? Like songs. Oh man. Um, man, I wish I had my. I, 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 Okay, just by default, Cardi B. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. just, um, name, name some names, and I, and I, I can't think of them off the top of my uh, head. Migos. Keep going, yep. Uh, Migos, Kendrick. Cardi. Yeah. Kendrick. Yeah. Kendrick. Yeah. Cole. All them. Uh, Drake. Not Two Chains. Drake. Lil Baby. Uh, oh. Yes. Jeezy. Uh, Takashi 6ix9ine. Yep. Takashi 6ix9ine, yep. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Played Gummo. Yep. Gummo. Gummo. Yep. Uh, I think he has a new one out now. He does. Yeah. He just he put does. a new one out. What's Tati. 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 Tati, yeah, I'm yeah, not going to yeah. lie, I like it. Shout out to Boy Wonder. <laughs> oh, is that boy one there? Yeah. Oh, that's, no doubt. I'm sorry. No doubt. It gets me hype. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets me hype. really hype. Yeah. Like, that's it. I think yeah. that's the one thing um, that that kind of is. Uh, that's the thing with hip hop right now. It's just energy, energy. right? And energy yeah. and it's not bounce. what you're saying at yeah. all. And then the thing is, though, it's you know, I I agree with that statement. Like you know, the the simplicity of a lot of music nowadays and production just makes it kind of watered down or like uninteresting but does it make it any less of music no i'm I'm not one to criticize like you know people uh especially musicians you know and when era i came in they was dissing sampling and everything i did and djing and and so you know 
people don't realize, and it kind of gets glossed over, is in the early 80s to late 80s, we had the fight over that hip hop is a fad and it's not gonna last and, yeah. and it, got, it got no respect. Where right. now you turn on every commercial, everything, everything it has mm-hmm. a beat to it, everything's yep. hip hop yeah. influenced. Mm-hmm. But when I came up, it was like, it's almost like the civil rights movement. Right. You said, yeah, hip hop, like what? Oh my God, that's <laughs> yeah. not music. If you weren't a, a, a kid, everybody dissed you. Every musician, every parent, every, you know, it, yeah. it just just got like, just totally trash. So it was, it was, it was tough back then, yeah. you know. What I'm saying, and like yeah. I said, people don't talk about because we kind of got past it. But you know, it was a, a it was a struggle for for that for that time. Yeah, I mean, because hip hop is like you said, it's part of pop culture. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have like the biggest pop stars right now that are you know pretty much dipping into hip hop uh, culture. Right? And even I mean, like pop, everywhere. and even pop publications, like yeah. you see on social media, you know their headlines are like the latest beef, the latest this. They like, they mm. even if you watch the shows now, they have like drop the mic. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Which is which I is like drop the mic. No, it's yeah. hilarious. Oh, I saw uh, Way, uh, Marlon Wayans against uh, Jay Farrow. Right. It was amazing. Oh, that got personal. Yeah. Oh, oh, it did. Where, it which did. Is that? I don't know. what's like. Five or seven or nine, okay. one of those channels. But it's, it's very scripted. It but, is, yeah. but it's it's, it's inter- you know you know you know what I thought was interesting though. What a rip off of Wild and Out that was Nick Cannon's Wild and Out because Nick mm-hmm. Cannon was the first yeah. one to do the rap battle stuff on TV, like right. you know that kind that of way. Yeah, you know comedy, what I'm saying? Yeah. And then whoever came up with that show literally was just like, okay, thank you. Let's just do our version. <laughs> okay. well, we're gonna pit these <laughs> people in it instead. Yeah, but he's you know? not mad. He's still got. Oh, he's his man. Own. He's yeah. he's, is, he's doing just fine. Yeah, he's you know, fine. but that's what people do. They see an idea mm-hmm. and they say, oh wow, I that looks great. I'm gonna do it this way too. But I'm gonna, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's I'm not gonna name any names. But it's confirmation but. too. Yeah, like, um, okay. Paul. Paul, I had a question for you because you know I DJ and producing, and um, I want to just talk about the Grave Diggers real quick. Woo! Right? There we go. I'm a huge classic, fan, classic, huge, classic. huge fan of Grave Diggers. Thank you. Um, and I, I really, I really love what you did on there. But what interests me about about that whole thing is like you coming from DJ producer, and then now you're putting groups together, right? Right. And like, so how did that? transition did you just see these guys and they're like yo super talented did Riza hit you and you like how did that how did you make that transition it's just one of those things where it, I was coming up off of having a record label with Russell Simmons mm-hmm. it was called Doodoo Man Records Doodoo hey, Man hey, Records wait wait wait, wait. <laughs> right and, 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 and that didn't work out well and all I remember was everything was just going bad at the time. Like the label didn't work out. You know, a whole lot of new producers was coming out. It's funny that I say new. Now they're mm-hmm. probably old school, you guys. Like mm-hmm. Pete Rock and Large Professor and all these oh, people. Man. So I was kind of losing losing ground. I'm like, man, I spent all this time working on this label for a record that never came out. Everybody's coming out. So in a depressed state, I'm like listening to people who I worked with before. Like I knew RZA when he was Prince Rakim. Be- wow. Before, ooh, wow. we love you, Rakim, and all. I- I've known him uh, through his manager, this guy named Mel Kwan. It's like 89, maybe. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, poetic, he's from Long Island. He was signed to Tommy Boy at one point. As you know, Fu Kwan mm-hmm. was in my group, Stetson Sonic. So it was just being depressed, going, man, everybody thinks I'm whack. I, I-, I lost my place. You know, I- when you're an artist, you're usually the hardest on yourself. Mm-hmm. And... and uh, I just I was just like listening to the voices. Like I had cassettes playing. I was like, yo, it'd be ill if I put this group together of guys that uh, who feel like I feel, who feel like they lost their place. Now, mind you, uh, RZA, well, back then Rakim, mm-hmm. um, Rakim, just did Ooh, We Love You, Rakim, and people were hating on him for that. Oh, yeah, that's a top hat in this video. <laughs> and, da, da, da. And, <laughs> and he had some problems with the law and stuff. And so you didn't hear from him for a while. But to me, he was still my, one of my favorite MCs because I, I I remember him, like said, we, we've had demos. Like Wednesdays, I should put him out on SoundCloud. Wow. Like demos that we made. Wow. Um, That's crazy. Poetic was part of a group called The Brothers Grimm, which was him and his brother. Um, and I was going to sign him to my label, but mm. the label didn't didn't last. And then Fuquan um, had the discrepancy with Stetsasonic, and that didn't work out. So I was like, if I put the energy of everybody feeling like they got dissed, I'm going to get a bunch of just like angry guys, put them together, and see what happens. Who's talented? Wow. And they came by the house, we, you know, um, and I introduced them to each other. They got along, and we made our first demo that 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 first day. Actually, I put it wow. on my SoundCloud. Wow. Um, and it's, it's funny because during that time, I remember Riz used to come by the house. I had a condo out in Long Island at the time, 
and he would bring uh like genius and old dirty and all those guys and they were just kind of like hanging out you know what I'm saying wow. before, this is before the fame right you, you know and, yeah. and protect your neck and all that mm-hmm. other stuff so it was just it's just kind of weird because I remember um old dirty came up to me he's like yeah me and uh me and genius you know my cousin we're gonna we think about putting this group together just us two you know you wanna uh I don't know if you want to do some some music for it. It's like, nah, man, I'm doing this grave digger thing right now, man. I can't really. <laughs> In hindsight, you know? right? <laughs> you know right. It, it, and as I told Riz, it's like, man, I should have invested some money into Wu Tang. You know, I, I was there to see the whole thing happen, mm-hmm. but I was just so focused on doing the grave diggers. And to go back to to your question, is yeah, it was just a uh, is hearing voices and putting things together. And like, I think they'll work well together. But I knew the energy. If I if it's, it's to me it's like basketball mm-hmm. you know it's if everybody's on the same page and they have the same goal in mind and there's no <laughs> superstar and you're better than this person and you work together you win mm-hmm. yeah. you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying it's the sacrifice it's it's the Detroit Pistons when they won the the championship there's mm-hmm. no stars so I knew if I put the right energies and we have the same type of energy together that yeah we're gonna show them we're gonna show them something good was gonna happen out of that and that's what the grave diggers was see that's amazing because that is the what you just said just now is the definition of what a producer is. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's beat makers who are very technically advanced in making beats, but f- to have that kind of vision and to have that, you know, follow your instinct and and just instinctually know to put people together right. to form a group and know it's a good idea and people are getting along. I mean, I, to me, that's the def- that's part of the definition of a music oh, producer. Without, without and like doubt. LeBron would be. You know, that would be the goal, I feel like, for a music producer is mm-hmm. to sort of mold yourself in the way that LeBron approaches basketball, where it's like, OK, I'm in I'm in this room. I'm in this studio. I'm collaborating with these people. How can I be a team player? But you don't get rid of Kyrie Irving. That's, you don't have- <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You, you keep him. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, that story. Hold on. We are not worthy for that story because that was <laughs> fucking legendary. ODB hanging out at the crib. Oh no, it, it, yo! I it, mean, what? It's funny. A lot of those guys were at the house. Like, who, and I remember they rolled in the MPV. You know, they all wow. like yeah. piled in. Was ODB was ODB like the same? Like, just nah, he, he was he was just very nice guy. He was a nice guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he wasn't. Man, he man. wasn't. You know what I mean? Like, well, that that was in those days. That, now we're talking about we did the grave digger start recording like in 90 91 uh-huh. it was early on right and you know as, as time go, got on he's got a little more rambunctious mm-hmm. <laughs> but he's always been a nice guy like yeah. it's, it's funny when when you see him it's like ah but he was yo me and, me and him hung out a few times yeah. you know what I'm saying like he we were, it's funny as different as we are is as cool as we were you That's know what amazing. I'm saying and so he's uh you know, God rest his soul. He was yeah. just like a cool guy, man. Yeah. He just had his turn up moment. What was yeah. one of the craziest <laughs> things that you can speak on that you've witnessed or experienced? Yeah. Craziest that time? experience. Because like the music industry, you know, you see and hear a lot. So in that time, how were things like in the studio? Or? Yeah, I would even yeah for any time I would say right. Like, yeah. what's your craziest experience? You're talking about as far as like wild things that happened or just how was it recording the, the atmosphere I say any wild of things any of it yeah. I'm, just, I'm specific like the wildest thing like <laughs> holy shit I can't believe thing? I'm in this room right now whether this it was like happening. a collaborated thing or like somebody came in there and like threw a drink like something I don't know <laughs> yeah. like something <laughs> somebody broke some equipment yo you know what's crazy <laughs> oh I remember one time we were working at this place called Firehouse Studios and uh in the and it was Grave Diggers and I think Wu-Tang was recording around the same time um, and one uh, I know who took it, but I'm not gonna say. Mm. Somebody stole an SB12 out, of there. Oh, <laughs> out the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it so? Is it like a big name person? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> we're not gonna. Okay. We're not. We're not gonna snitch. No, no. But I mean, there was nothing really wild. Like, yo, there's guns. I mean, yeah. put like this. It, probably some of the wildest things I could think of was, or just dumb things is uh, just some of the people that were there. Like, uh, this is my, not, might not amuse you guys, but mm-hmm. it amuses me. We were, um, I was recording Three Feet High and Rising, and we worked at a place called Calliope Studios on 38th Street. It's like a big loft. It was, it, sonically it was horrible, but it was mm-hmm. comfortable to work in. And so, you know, at any given moment, that was when everybody's come to studios have, you know, Tribe used to be there, Jungle Brothers, Red Alert, like and it, people used to roll in. 
So we were recording, and all of a sudden, this dude just walked. You know, there's this dude there. We're chilling. So I'm looking. He's not talking to anybody. So I stopped the music, and I asked Dave. And I was like, Yo, is this your friend or whatever? He's like, no. And I was like, uh, I was like, excuse me, like, what, what, are you, what are you doing here? He's like, yo, this is how popular Dale I was. Yo, I just want to say I look like him. He's pointing to Dave. I, I'm, I'm, I'm his double. <laughs> He's like, uh, okay. Wow. <laughs> like, wow. just, just weird things, wow. you know, people would happen. Dela on our, on our, the day that we signed, coming from Tommy Boy, they got into a fight in Manhattan. With each other? No, no. Oh. The oh. random fight just in the street. Someone. Wow. Oh, wow. It, like a literal fight. No, there's, there's, two, there's two white dudes that were fighting. And you know, they was kind of big. They were just standing there watching. All of a sudden, guys, hey, you got a problem with me? And, uh, uh, and then uh, next thing I know, the fist started like, flying. What? Yeah, yeah. Like now we do. And now I'm like, I yo, do. we just signed a contract. Yeah, yeah, What's wrong with you? Yeah. Say it don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Did you find yourself having to be like the mediator in a lot of situations? Yeah, I think that's what the producer is. You know, what I'm saying yeah. it, it, it's. Uh, Cause just working with artists, you know, whether you're a producer or manager, sometimes can get kind of tough. Cause yeah, you got you. That's a responsibility in some yeah, moments. Yeah, the therapist. Well, 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 like I said, you, you gotta. Consider. The thing is, 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 is learning how to work and, and talk with people and knowing who's who. Cause everybody's different. Like some person, you go, yo, you a sucker. You can't rhyme. You go word, and he'll write a really good rhyme. <laughs> right. And you go, oh my god, you tell that to somebody else, they go ah, and go home. <laughs> and leave. Yeah. yeah. So you gotta know who, who your personnel right. is, how they respond. You yeah. know, what with. with you know, I think I get violent, you know, so yeah. it, it, it's it's part of that. And a lot of what I do is before I work with people, I'll sit and, you know, we'll go eat, we'll hang out, we'll talk. I like to know who I'm working with. Mm -hmm. That's with everybody. Yep. Like, I'll get on a conversation and really get to know who these people are, you mm -hmm. know, and then it makes it easier when you're in studio because think about it, it's like with stranger. I mean, they respect your work and they want you to like you know obviously produce them so they trust you to a certain extent but I want to be comfortable let's go ah oh, no that's whack yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying if I can't mm -hmm. say that and like right yeah. Oh, yeah he might fire me he might wow you know yeah. I, we got to be able to just to be open because at the end of the day the audience has no idea of what went on in the studio they just see the final product yeah. so we have to be responsible for what they hear mm -hmm. so you know we really have to sit down and make the best thing possible egos aside yep and get it done you know because uh, yeah. the worst thing is just sit there and, and i've seen it where it's just uncomfortable and yeah. you know you can't tell people they can't talk mm. to you and then you go okay right and then you make this whack record mm -hmm. yeah whack record you know i mean <clears throat> even if it comes out not as you anticipated at least i like to know that i gave 100 percent at yeah, the end of the exactly. day and i tried you know but it's a bad feeling just to let things kind of slide. It's like relationships, you know. Yeah. You, you, you hate mm -hmm. your girlfriend, hate your boyfriend. You know, you yeah. kind of just roll with it. Next thing you know, you're cheating, and yeah. then that doesn't <laughs> yeah. work. You know, what I'm saying just tell them like, "Yo, I hate you." Yeah. Then, Speaking of you know <laughs> beefs, and we don't have to dive into it that much, but yeah, I was obviously, just mention that. yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, which it's not really beef, but you know, putting on wax, which I like, which the whole Drake and uh, oh no, that's beef. Push your teeth. Yeah, that's I think beef. it's turned into Pusher beef now. I mean, because since it got kind of personal, maybe. But um, do you think there's a difference with like the beef and the way it goes on now than like you know back back in the day, like in the '90s, and you know how how people went Battles. about beef and battling and stuff like that? Yeah, what's your opinion on that? Um, like, yeah. like, like, I'll give you my opinion. I think, like, back then, like, if it was beef, it was on site. You know what I mean? Like, if you really had That's beef true. and you guys really got personal and it was like, I but I feel like it now nice. it's, it's not really beef. It's just like who trolling. people's opinion, <laughs> trolling, <laughs> people, lot, people's opinion, the people, the public's opinion on people is Sneak more important. Too. Yes. You know, Sneak uh, <laughs> um, so I think. Or like subliminals, you know what I'm saying? Where I feel like back in the day was a lot more direct. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I would agree. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of times if there was a beef, you handle it like men. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll see you. Mm -hmm. And I'll we did you. see each other at some point. Yeah. Either it got resolved yeah. or yeah. In one way or got resolved another way. Now, like I said, guys hide behind stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, like, nah, I didn't really say that. I was just, you know, or, you know, like you just did trolling. it to sell records. Trolling. You know, it wasn't like don't yeah. say that. Oh, it's no beef. I just did it, you know, to 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 sell records. Yeah. Or something. Oh yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff would have been confronted at yeah. some point. Mm -hmm. You know, I but but I, I think that has a lot to do with um, 
just I hate to get into this conversation, but mm -hmm. just men in general of of the past and the, and the present, like men were men. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like you know, they would have thick mustaches, and you know what I'm saying? They're right. like, you know, it, it's like you handle things as a man. Nowadays, it, it's a lot of little boys, man. Yeah, and they just like, yeah. hey, you know, they're tough. They want to pull out a gun. They rather shoot you before they sit and have a conversation with mm -hmm. you. They're scared to talk to you. But they'll shoot you first and then run. You know right. what I'm saying? And then snitch. You know, but, so right. it's, we're in a way different era. So obvi obviously, I'm, I'm, this is not, we're not, this is not going to involve like violence, I don't think in any way. Mm -hmm. But um, what are your thoughts on the current battle right now between Push and, and Drake? Yo, you Pusha know, T's response was, was, was hurtful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was savage. That was, that was you, smart. Do you, oh my god, that was let's smart. Let's do. Let's. We haven't. So we. Yeah, we have. Since we've been back, we haven't even spoken about what? it. I think we should all talk no, about that. I was waiting. We'll wait yeah. For you um, your what? So you. You think. You think that was a, a good like one two punch from Push. Oh man, I, it was. He. He got him at his fan base. The women. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like what I said. With, like women love. Oh man, Drake. Da, da, da. Drake. And and now it's like, yo, he treats women like this. He doesn't have a son. That that's his fan. He. He went for career destroying stuff. That's yeah. Nice. Which to me was like, you gotta like that. I right, right. <laughs> yeah. so respect, respect. Is that is the line crossed then? No, I know for the no. in terms of the family. No, nope. no. Nope. Nope. Think I about think everything is on the table. Think about all the, the and also I feel like people have to like do their research on like other beefs that were like before, like mm -hmm. even back to like um, Pac. Nas know, talking Pac, about daughter. Nas, Nas Jay Z. Um, when uh, Easy E dropped uh, Real Motherfucking G's. Like uh, Dre Day. Like people have been crossing the line since crossing the line. And in battle rap, that's like all they do. They Solid. come for moms. They come for you know kids your with race, illnesses. Everything. Your race. Yeah. Who you who you are. It's just about. Somebody said they, they tweet. I think Anderson Pack tweeted. He's like, there's no such thing as low belt when you're in war. Right. And I was yeah. just like. He man, Pusha. I just felt like he was like, "You're not gonna meek mill me." I'm a like. He had, no I, he had his. He had. He backed him into a wall, and I yeah. feel like I have to agree with you. Like, the only reason why it's like, damn, it's like, yeah, Drake. Because my mom was like, "Well, Drake got hits and this and this." And I was like, yes, but I was like, as a woman, I was like, his whole fan base is girls. But, so, but I have a question yeah. though. Here, here's what I think about it, just mm -hmm. like super briefly. Yeah. Um, I don't think it hurts Drake's career. I think Drake still got hits. I yeah. do think Drake is going to respond, and I do think he probably got some dirt himself. Because mm -hmm. the way the industry is set up, everybody knows got about something. each other, mm -hmm. especially when you're that big, mm -hmm. you know. You, got no some people got the same circles, yeah. and a lot of people are fake. So, I'm sure he can get some dirt There's on him who too. No things and amongst yeah. no things. So, yeah. and but I do think Pusha went hard, and I don't think that um, you know he he should have held back. I don't think he's wrong for that. One thing I would say though is I didn't agree with the whole um, 40, 40 yeah. comment. Yeah, that was um, fucked up. Yeah, that was fucked it's up. Fucked up. I mean, you know, if we're talking about you can't, there's no holding back. I get it, but I think like. That was just kind of unnecessary, you know. Yeah, but I think it, I think that started when when Drake to called out his kidding. fiance. Yeah, but and like I mean, that's he, where it got personal for Pusher. Sure. Pusher sure was like, "All right, you want to go there? Then now there's yeah. no holding back, and now it's really on." I and think it's. It I think the diss would have been just as effective minus the four. Even line. yeah, it wasn't mm -hmm. needed, and also we have to you know it's it's it is tit for tat. It's it's petty in battle rap, so people are always like, "Okay, that was sensitive," but. Did did anybody say the same thing when Drake came for Kid Cudi and his mental illness? Mm -hmm. But why are women mad at right. Drake when I don't think he ever denied his child? I okay, this is what I think it is personally. because he's not if he, he's not posting his child. Well, I here's think the he's thing: such a big the celebrity. women he talks about, it's like the women that he talks about, and he talks about all these women that are in his life. The main person who's like your seed, you know, this woman is like, you, you know, she had your child. It's like, I guess it's a, a fantasy is ruined. A little bit just as far as like how girls fantasize over like drake is our ll our keith sweat kind but of he's an artist way. and he's a man that he, he's gets man. caught up doing a lot of bullshit he got caught up but right. it's like i think it's the the image of just him being wholesome and loving women like that being his big fan base it just it does it's not gonna hurt his career as far as like oh people are gonna stop like right. fucking with drake but it does make people be like oh word but this also, like, we don't oh. know if it's is it true about I mean, the whole not thing. Saying anything. Is it like I mean, I heard it's not this, even confirmed? I, heard this I don't rumor, know. I heard this rumor back in December, so I'm kind of surprised why. Like even when right. if you I Google it, it, there are articles from January, so I'm kind of surprised as to why well, a lot of people haven't now. heard it. Right. I think because 
they probably didn't have any confirmation so everybody shut it down because they weren't sure but that's definitely been on the internet since december january right. and i mean you know I, I agree with that and i'm I'm not saying like pro drake because it is but yeah. i'm just looking at it even from a woman's perspective i mean he never denied having a child like if you listen to his songs he talks about women claiming being pregnant he talks yeah. about like yeah. everything he's not saying hey guys um i'm ha i have a child he was just born last week he's not gonna do that to satisfy you guys you know right. he's gonna say how he says it being an artist and i think within being an artist like many artists he probably got caught up and yeah. fucked up yeah, and human. he got a baby now but i'm sure he's paying those bills yeah. a lot and of seeing rappers, his kids we just don't know it. we don't yeah. know about it paul what do you think is going to happen like what do you think actually what do you think drake should do should he mm. respond should he throw keep, on the towel keep, should he keep the eye on the prize and just act like you know what i mean Stay like what, what do you think I, the I right think, thing to i think do ego will make him respond but yeah. you know it's it's almost be just as cool not to say anything right you know it's, it's hard to say like yeah it, it, it his uh, his character got assassinated. <laughs> you, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, so it's not necessarily like you said his, his hits and stuff. Like he's still gonna probably make great music because yeah. he's Drake. But it does it, it just, his, his character is it's a question now. Right. You know? I think. But do you think more so his character is questioned in the hip hop industry? Yeah, it's always been questioned in the hip hop because his industry. fans that love pop, like his. I mean, let's be real. Let me, like, yeah, let me give you an example. So my fiance, she she's like of the community that like doesn't really go online and like dig for this stuff like i she knows about the beef because of me because right. i talk about it and right. stuff she she didn't she's not like listening to any replies she didn't listen to the push t thing right. she knows about it through like me mentioning it and then like her twitter feed or whatever right i believe that there's like majority of people are like her i mm -hmm. still think that we this and like all this stuff is like still kind of the a small percentage yeah i think of most people so i don't i personally Definitely. don't think that this is really going to affect mm -hmm. drake negatively mm -hmm. at all really um because there's just too many people out there right. and also let's not forget drake's fans aren't only females like mm -hmm. he's got a lot of and i think he's got pretty much everybody and i think like right? i said like you know the way we the way we're involved in the industry like you know there's a lot of criticism within the hip-hop industry about ghost writers and you know just clowning him because of because he has a kid or his baby mom looks good or doesn't good a lot of people don't give a shit about no, that people don't like for instance i look at my brother and his friends they love hip-hop rap they love drake they obviously are in tune with what's going on with the beef but like that's it. That's it. To that yeah. extent. Yeah. When the music comes out, if it's good, it's good. Yeah. For me, it's like, yo, everybody in the industry, everybody's saying it. It's yeah. like, it, it becomes crazier when you're more in community. it. Yeah. When you know? you're in it, it's a little different. Yeah. 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 But Definitely. I don't think it, he's fine. I mean, if it is his kid, I'm sure he's taking care of it. He's seen the baby. We just right. don't know about it. And right. that's fine. That's his business. Like, tons of artists do. And exactly. tons of people have kids and don't have them in the spotlight. I just think it was... I think Pusha T was attempting to end his career yeah. right. with this. Which, yeah. with this I mean, universe. he did what he had to do. I just hope and I feel like Drake will come back with something because like he you will. said, it's his ego. Oh, he yeah. could, and he he's could not be just going to let it. He's no. not going to let it be like that. And I, I want to see what I Kanye wanna... says on his album yeah. because if Kanye addresses that or whatever Kanye addresses, you know. It's going to be entertaining for yeah, sure. I, I see you, that's what I was going to say. That. It's I'm no matter entertainment. what. Entertainment. Like, exactly. I'm, I'm entertained. I'm here for the music, yeah. man. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I hope I just hope they keep going back and forth Facts. only because for the culture I love this shit Facts. Yeah. Yeah. I love I all us talking about it I love when the track comes out everyone's like yo yeah, motherfucker, yeah. did you hear that track yeah, did you hear yeah. what he said yo fast forward it's to like this the one. world is in tune exactly all in the same listen moment. as long as it doesn't get like down to real beef 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 which is not in my opinion it's not gonna be that cause they just don't seem like those kind of guys now Takashi 6 9 and uh, Casanova I thought that was gonna be some real beef 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 and look at them they squashed it yeah and they're good yeah, you know true. what i'm saying so like it's nobody wants uh yeah, yeah problems exactly with exactly <laughs> right okay so yeah. so for me i i i really hope jerry comes back like tomorrow and yeah. says something. i wouldn't be mad i mean like i would be mad if he didn't respond but i wouldn't be mad if he didn't i respond. just think it's you know i mean? just think it's entertaining i want him to though. Drake, Drake, I want him to drake's mm -hmm. influence and and um 
his legacy is just so concrete in my opinion right now that even if he doesn't respond he'll still saying, have yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, I'm saying. he Good. could go either way you mm-hmm. know I, and, but if he does it and it's not what we want it to be then it's like man he's working that's what I'm saying if, if he doesn't he's in Pusha album took mode it right in my now. opinion if he if he doesn't come back then Pusha got that one he's at, he, in my opinion. he has an album coming out man he has to address a lot more than just this so yes. I'm sure he even if it's not a whole diss record or it going below the belt opinion. he's gonna address too. it he's probably gonna be like yeah I have a kid yeah. no, but what's smart it was on layers though you see the, the, the picture the black face picture right. he, said, he has to yeah, answer that it was, it, was, it was so calculated yeah I was like whoa this is uh, this is interesting what I would what I would say though it's funny because all of this has been going on and I was on my way to work yesterday um, and you know smoked a little something you know in the morning before yeah. I went to work mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm listening to his new rec- his new single I'm upset yeah. and I'm like this sound this makes way more, way more sense, sense now sense. that can't go 50 yeah. 50 with no hoe yeah. yeah I was thinking that too I was like this is all tying up too it's all well. tying in but that's yeah. how it happens too. Yeah, um, Paul, have you um have you been in the studio with Kanye at all? Like throughout no, your years? No, that that's one person I have not met. No, wow, I haven't met wow. Kanye. No, have you worked with um? I mean, you've I'm assuming you've collaborated with like other producers too. Like, uh, have you worked with Dre at all? I haven't worked with Dre, but I've had numerous conversations with him. We toured together when I was with Stet, and um, yeah, he's a nice guy, man. Yeah, genius, man. Like, if anybody who I would deem is probably I don't know. Maybe like my favorite hip hop producer would probably be him. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your What's your top five right now? I'm gonna put you in the spot. <laughs> top five producers. <laughs> top five producers. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Really? So we have no time. Track. No time. So we'll stamp. all give our top five. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. So yeah. we'll start with, yeah. with Paul though. Um, we could start with Atlas and then get back to you so you can think about it. Okay. I, I, yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Atlas top five producers. Go. Timbo. This Kanye. is of all time. This is all time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Timbo. Is it in order? Hip hop. Um, no specific order no specific because order. it's just too hard, it's hard to put it in no, order. Let's, for me. let's keep it in hip hop. Okay. Hip hop. I'm going to say Timbo, uh, Dre, of course. Uh, I like Primo, um, Pharrell, uh, Kanye. Wow. Okay. Okay. Go. Okay. Uh, Perfection. Uh, mine's oh, going to be similar. Um, yeah. I would say Timbo, Kanye West. Pharrell, Timbo, Kanye West, Pharrell, Dre, and I know it's a tough one. Dylon, Dylon, <laughs> all top five. I'm still going with that Dylon. I wonder how Dylon's doing right now. He's still working. Um, Call him. Call. <laughs> you got one more. Premier. 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 Primo. Mm, okay, I'll say Pharrell, um, Rodney Jerkins. Mm. Oh, um, next one. <laughs> Mike Moth. Favorite. Um, so Pharrell, Rodney He's Jerkins, Timbaland, like, come on, uh, Dre, and I'll do, I'll throw Swizz in there. Swizz. Mm, wow. Hey. Swizz beats in there. The simplicity. Hey. Yep. So All right. there it goes. Okay. J- Dilla. J Dilla. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I knew that I was, was coming. <laughs> I, was, I forgot Dilla. My bad. You guys, <laughs> I knew that was, I was the first one. I was surprised that you're like J Dilla there, Clay. I forgot Dilla. I, I was like tripping, but yeah. <laughs> Honorable mention. But there's so many people. There's so many. I know. I missed it's this. Hard there's too many. I love, yeah, it's, love it's so many. I love so many. I'm just gonna keep it five. Dilla, Pete Rock, Dr. Dre, Timbaland. I'm gonna throw a curveball. I'm gonna throw a curveball because this guy is just so filthy. Knots. Okay. Oh, Knots is dope. Knots yeah. is so filthy yeah. to me. His base, everything. But there's so many. No, he's really dope. Too many. Anyway. Paul, go ahead. All right, Paul. Okay, I have to think in terms of like influence and not just music. Uh, Rick Rubin, mm-hmm. Dr. Dre. Um, ooh, I had time to think about this. RZA. Mm. RZA. Oh my God, he's. Um, RZA. Um, Premier, and I would have to say Pharrell. Pharrell. Nice. Damn, I miss Pharrell too. Nice. There's so okay. many fire people. Fire list. I got a fire list. I got a fire list. I think we all crossed, agree. Like, everyone got a fire list. Yeah, everyone has a fire list. Yeah. 
Paul, what are you? So, what are you working on nowadays? I mean, you know, I know you do a lot of production, DJing. What's like? Um, what's what are you passionate about right now? Um, right. Well, I have a top secret project I'm not to okay. talk about. Okay. Everything. Yeah, top but that secret. that that's that's a, that that I can't talk about. But okay. um, I've been working with the trap track lib guys. Uh, oh yeah, shout yeah. to track lib. Yeah. 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 Oscar shout and, to Tom, and Pear, Pear, yeah, shout Pear, to Tommy, P-E-R, yep. Oscar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I've been working on that. Um, me and Dan, we're. Uh, Thing about working on a new handsome boy record mm. so we've been sitting around getting on uh, some handsome music for that oh my god uh and i've been in conversation with the rizza so we'll mm. see we'll probably be working on something new together mm. um and djing oh yeah yeah and yeah there's a few yeah, there's a few you know you know what's weird it's like i've always been very secretive if you know right. i'm not even on social media like that right, like right, right. you know what i'm saying like I, so yeah it's hard for me to kind of get into it man. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm bad for this day and age man. I'm, yeah. I'm like I'm mad secretive right, right 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 right. right. Yeah. well when your when, when your you, secret project comes out you're gonna come back and then we're gonna talk oh, about oh, it oh yeah. yeah. it, it's, yeah. it, it's, 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 it's gonna be life changing yeah oh, oh life changing like yeah man I like those wow. words no I mean I mean to me making music and just uh, in general and just being an artist is pushing the boundaries and getting out your comfort zone like a lot of people you know, they'll produce and make music in their comfort zone, and that's why, oh, okay, it sounds like him, sounds like whatever. I like going to the point where I'll make something like, yo, my career might end after this. <laughs> but that, that's that's the fun of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's like, that's learning, that's, you know, collaborating with others, that's get into a different creative headspace, and that's why a lot of my music just sounds so much different than the other. That's yeah. why I, uh, Grave Digger sound different than a De La Soul, than a Stetsasonic, than a Handsome, Handsome Boy, Boy yep. than a Bernie Warrell, than a Prince Among Thieves. Mm, like, you know, yeah. it, it has an a air of like, okay, that sounds like something Paul would do, but yeah. I like that. Chris Rock, you know, mm-hmm. comedy records. I did. That's cho- right. I did you won a Grammy for that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I did, cho- right. did a children's record, you know, Amazing. so mm-hmm. it, it, it's, it's, it's that part of it too is exciting. It, it's just like pushing the boundaries because I can make. I could have made a billion me myself in eyes. Right, <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? But what's the fun in that? What's like let's let me try to get you to like something different or let me right. see if I can do something different. You know? So How how important and crucial do you feel like it is to as a producer to take on projects that you're passionate about? That that's a big kind of like topic of discussion that we have on the podcast is, you know, I personally am of the uh, group of people that prefers to work on stuff and work with people that I know I'll enjoy working with. So what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I, I think, you know, either something that you think you could learn from mm-hmm. um, that will make you a better producer, I think is important. And, you know, whatever you're passionate about is going to be your best stuff anyway. Mm-hmm. The stuff that you wake up in the morning and that's the first thing you think of, the first conversation on the telephone, the first thing you write, the, you know, the first idea you write down, it's always going to be your better stuff. Always. Mm-hmm. You know, wow. you could always just make stuff for money, but usually that's the whacker stuff. Right. <laughs> you know, so you could tell when, when the artist, that's why usually the first albums maybe like even second albums of usually your favorite artists are usually the best because that's all their passion all they're like Ugh. Mm-hmm. and then after maybe the second record it gets a little commercial because now they're starting to think of the public and right. thinking yeah, money and, and maintaining mm-hmm. and then they try to redeem themselves if they're lucky enough to come out with a fourth right. or fifth record then they try I'm taking it back to the try first to record yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. taking it back to the, to the prime mm-hmm. yeah, but, old school but the initial um, drive is usually passion yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and yeah, I, I'm totally with that. How was it working with Queen Latifah? Oh, Latifah. Oh, I wanted yeah. to ask you that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Latifah's great. How did you man. get into, how did you get involved with that? Well, she uh, was on Tommy Boy mm-hmm. at the time, mm-hmm. and De La Soul was working with De La Soul, and they were on Tommy Boy, and she was a big De La fan. Mm-hmm. And so Tommy Boy had mentions like, yeah, you know, you should work with Latifah. Now, if you notice her, on her first record, Wrath of My Madness, and a lot of people probably don't realize that the rhyme style is the same rhyme pattern as plug tuning. Mm. It's the same melody of rhymes. That's how big of a fan she was. And that's how big of a influence De La was for her. So mm. it was just natural since I worked with De La for her to mm-hmm. say, hey, Paul, I'm going to work with you. So that, that was that was that was fun. It was a lot yeah. of fun. How do you feel about the and we talk about it a lot in the podcast. How do you feel about the whole leasing the beats like you know buy one beat for 10 bucks you get two free they have that thing. yeah <laughs> that's, yeah, that's how much out the loop i yeah, am no yeah. pun intended yeah it's like yeah. buy one get three free they're selling them for like 10 bucks 20 bucks a beat 
Hey man, I told you, just add water, it. man. If you got like a thousand beats, you're making money. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What, what, what's it? I, I, I don't know. I, I really, I think the problem I have today is, is ge- in general, just with the music business, uh, is quantity over quality. You know, it's like everybody wants to push stuff out, no matter what the quality is. Like, mm-hmm. man, I mean, when I was making records, you spend like a good solid year, half year, just like killing just to try to make this thing just right and make it so you love it and getting all the things prepared just so it'll ride for at least a year now yeah. you put out something it's like whip mm-hmm. <laughs> you know that's it in and out <laughs> what yo you know you know what what and the one thing i did follow on social media is when um oh man kod oh yeah j cole j cole put that record out i seen everybody post that all over the place that went like for a good week as soon as Charles Gambino came down, bam, that oh, was gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. like, yo, yo, next thing. And, we and, totally yeah. missed that. And yeah. I was like, whoa, look at that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, no mention of his record. No, me- yeah. I was like, wow, is, is it really like that? Right. They they stopped talking about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you do you think that as music? Do you think as music creators, do you think because that's happening right now, we are forced to change our strategy in terms of, or is the strategy still? you know, spend five, six, three months on the product and make a quality. Do you think quality will always trump? I, th- I think at some point quality will win. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it's, I, I mean, maybe I'm just being overly optimistic or naive, but you know, fast food records, there, there's a good era of early 2000s records, maybe to mid 2000s that you'll never hear on the throwback at dude. Right, <laughs> you know right, what right, I'm right. saying? But there's a bunch of 80s and 90s records that yeah. you'll hear on the throwback that'll yeah. be played in stadiums and everything. You know, it's good for the time and, yeah, and you'll make your money and whatever the case is. But you can, to me, I, what you put your love and effort in, it'll it'll come through. Mm-hmm. It'll come through. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I like to think so. Yeah. You know, I'm just glad I came out in the era I came out now, because now it's just, yo, I wouldn't even know the first thing to do except like get my social media popping. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, like what do you do in, right. in, a, in, a, yeah. in a world of like a billion people? Yeah. And even if you make something great, as I gave an example of, of uh, J. Cole to Childish Gambino, man, my feelings would get hurt. You know right. what I'm saying? They left me yeah. for this two weeks. Yep. I'll try to throw out another done. single in the video. Give them a chance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's really bizarre because we, we kind of get a tempo of what's hot via social media. But then, you know, with the, the Childish Gambino and J. Cole example, you know, Cole's going to go on tour and people are going to oh, sing KOD word for word. So I think I think you're right, man. I, th- I think quality really is just always going to be the thing, because if the, if the music is quality and you're an artist, you're always going to be able to tour. Mm-hmm. Cause people yeah. are just going to oh, keep yeah. wanting to see you perform that song. But right? what about pride in your music? Like you want to be able to like to play it and feel good about it. You don't yeah. want to have to sit there and disclaimer your joint before you put it on. Yo, I just made this because, you know, I forget right. the kids. If you have yeah. to disclaimer your music <laughs> from the top, then you're really not feeling what you're doing. You should it's be able to put it on with confidence, fold your arms up. Yep. Yep. And like, yeah, if you don't like it, I like it. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and you should feel like that about everything. Yeah. You, you know, I had to put this out, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So it just no kills justification. We say that all the time, too, when, like, producers will send us beats or, like, well, I'll be in a session. <coughs> Excuse me. And then before they even hit play, they give me a whole preface. Of, whole well, down. you know, I didn't really mix this part. And I only had out. It's like, bro, <laughs> shut up and just hit play. That's all I want. Only I'll be making and let me decide. Right. And let me decide how I feel about it. Right. Don't tell me how to like before it even yeah. happens. Because once yeah. they do that, I'm already deflated. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if they just went in confidently, like Paul you said, you might not even notice and hit play. Yeah. I might just be like, "Yo, this is fire." You exactly. know what I'll I mean? I'll tell you so, after it's not yeah. mixed. Exactly. I'll yeah. tell you after. Like, right. Oh, I did it for right. I mean, every art is going to have some type of in- insecurity. I mean, you're yeah. like that. You know, in, in general. But you really know if there's music you made that you really like. You yeah. know that True. you know certain mm-hmm. songs you like. They might not like it, but I, and that's yo. That's been my whole career. Like, mm-hmm. I have not chased pop like ever in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've always just made just weird stuff for me first. And then mm-hmm. if you happen to come along, then fine. So from the beginning, from me making my first bit of money, I've saved it with the idea of. I might never ever work again. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So I've been very fortunate, very blessed that I was like, whoa, that? You like that? Okay, next, next, right. next. Mm-hmm. And and here it is, like, my first record came out in 85. Here it is, 2018, yeah. that I'm still around. So it, 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 the only thing I could say is, like, I just did it by passion, by heart, and what I yeah. felt and what I loved. And, you know, people, people feel that. Even yeah. if you don't yep. technically have the technical part of yep. it down, 
they feel your vibe. Mm-hmm. Wu Tang's first album is a very good example of that. Sonically, it's horrible. You know what I'm saying? Just the big quality, everything yeah. is all. Mm-hmm. But you feel what they're you felt doing. It. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, it's it. You could tell. You, you know. I was gonna ask you to it drop, resonates. I was gonna ask you to drop a gem before you go, but that was an amazing gem. Mm-hmm. And I want to I want to add on to that a little bit too. Um, you know, the idea that you were creating music that you wanted to create and that you're passionate about and then thinking to yourself oh this might be the end if they don't like this or whatever it is but then you continuing to do that and then here we are 20 30 years later and it's worked so well for you so i think the thing we can learn from that and take away is you know that is no accident like those weren't coincidences that you the universe you know uh, paid you enough money to be able to keep doing this it's mm-hmm. just i think the passion and love that you have for your music is what kept you going and here you are today so that that's amazing yeah like I said, i'm just thankful and you know and just be good to people learn how to yep. talk to people i think that's mm-hmm. one thing that people don't put enough effort in the music industry or just in general just learn how to talk to people and be nice mm-hmm. yeah. you know just good karma will bring a lot of things back to Definitely. you facts facts facts, facts. facts. Very simple. Oh. Oh, man. <laughs> I need one more cool one. So where can people, I know we'll be wrapping up, but where yeah. can people, if they did want to find yeah. you on social media? Well, you see all my old postings okay. at, <laughs> yeah. uh, everything's at DJ Prince Paul. Okay. Uh, and uh, Facebook would be DJ Prince Paul Extraordinaire or something like that. Prince Paul DJ Extraordinaire. Something okay. along that line. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I'm bad at that. Okay. Well, I, I have your email now, so I'm just going to change your yeah. email. Hey, you yeah, know? Yeah, it, it, same it, thing. It there you go. Well, <laughs> Prince Paul, thank you for joining us, man. Yeah. It's been such an honor. Oh, no, um, it's, thank it's, you for the stories. Um, and uh, yeah, man, uh, good luck with all the new stuff coming out. I, I mean, appreciate you're, you're a vet in this game, and I'm, we're so excited for the new music and the secret project. Yeah. yeah. You're Hopefully coming back for that. Back. Yeah, yeah, watch. That's Expect to hear from me when it drops. Life changing. Yeah, yeah, watch when I come in with like a fur. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mad oh, rings on it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. And I give, and I give you guys free furs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, we get free furs. Now that is XL. life changing. Yeah. Yes, we go. It's all making sense now. It might yeah. be faux, but you know. I was yeah. going to say, let's be careful for Peter now. Yeah, yeah, yeah Peter you know, I, I just, us. just, you know, just saying, man. Yeah. Disclaimer. All right, let's give a round of applause to Prince Paul for yeah. us today. Thank you so much, my brother. Uh, yeah, yeah.